How would we solve this triangle? Well, what are we given? We are given angle 34.8, 111, and, and 42.7. So we're given angle, angle, side, which is fine. It's a side, side angle that we run into issues with. So if we have opposites, we keep working with opposites. So the sine of 11 over 42.7, yep, it's opposite, equals the sine of beta over, no, we don't know, so we need the sine of 34.8 over A, okay? So then we can cross multiply. So 42.7 times the sine of 34.8 divided by the sine of 111. And we get 26.1. How do we find what B is? Um, you have to take 180 minus 111 is 69. 69 minus 34.8 is 34.2. Correct? Are we good? So then you take the sine of 111 over 42.7 equals the sine of 34.2 over B. Cross multiply and solve. And it's 25.7. So we good with that? That's pretty basic, straightforward. Then we get to the side side angle. What angle should I put in the lower left? B, 39.8. What's opposite of that? B, 32.1. Where should I put the other side? On the left right here, okay? So that makes this, since that's A, that makes this alpha, this gamma, and this C. Okay? So if I do law of sines, sine of 39.8 over 32.1 equals the sine of alpha over 37.3. So 37.3 times the sine of 39.8 divided by 32.1. We get a decimal and then we go second sign, second answer, and the angle is 48.1. Now, alpha could be 48.1 or alpha could be what? 180 minus 48.1, which is 131.9, right? So alpha could be 131.9. This is still 39.8. This is still 37.3. This is still 32.1. This is C and gamma. So now in both triangles, I got to figure out what gamma is. What's 180 minus 48.1 minus 39.8? That would be 
82.9, I'm guessing. 92.9, thank you. Oh yeah, 92.1. Okay, over here, divine gamma, 180 minus 131.9 minus 39.8. So 17.3, I'm guessing, again, or is it 18.3? Oh, I'm really off. 8.3, okay. So then you use the law of sines, figure out the other side C. So the sine of 39.8 over 32.1 equals the sine of 92.1 over C. So 32.1 times the sine of 92.1 divided by the sine of 39.8 is 50.1. And over here, the sine of 39.8 divided by 32.1 equals the sine of 8.3 over C. <coughs> and that's 7.3. So the shorter side of C is 7.2, the longer side is 50.1. 50.1 goes with 92.1 and 48.1. 7.2 goes with 8.3 and 131.9. Okay? So it does take a little bit of a process to get those. Okay, here's another one. But how many triangles do I have in this case, Shanty? Why none? What do you mean? Why don't you close your lid? Why didn't you do it? Did you were you here this morning at eight ten? Were you here this morning at eight ten? So why are you complaining about getting a zero on something that you could have come here this morning and done? Yeah, yeah, it's due today, and you could have come this morning at eight ten and done it, right? Yeah, so don't complain. So, since we have one obtuse angle, can you have more than one obtuse angle in a triangle? No. So then we only have one possible triangle. That's 141.8. Across from it is 7.9. And A, let's make alpha here. This is 9.4. And what can you see right now, Mr. Kessler? Right now. That's an obtuse triangle. What else do we know? Shouldn't A be shorter than C? Shouldn't A be shorter than C? Or longer than C since 9.4 is bigger than 7.9? So can you have two obtuse <laughs> angles? No. So there are no possible triangles. <laughs> Shanty was a genius there. Didn't even know it. All right. For the lunar crater problem. We've done this so much, we shouldn't need to do this again, but we're going to do it just in case. Okay. A is here. And B is down here. And the reason why A is by it, by this angle up here is it has to be obtuse. BAC is an obtuse angle. That's 115. Okay. ACB is 41. So then we figure out what's left for angle B. 115 plus 41 is 156. 180 minus 156 is 24, right? All right. C is 50 meters from A. We're like figuring out how far this is. 
So we say the sine of 24 over 50 equals the sine of 41 over x. So 50 times the sine of 41 divided by the sine of 24 is 80.6. Okay. What if we have side, side, side? If we have side, 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 then we know we have to use what, Kelvin? If we have side, 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 we need to use the law of cosines, cosines exactly. So since we need the law of cosines, here we need to figure out an angle. So do we use the top three or the middle three? The middle three, because those are all about angles. So alpha equals a squared minus, or well, actually, the inverse cosine of a squared minus b squared minus c squared divided by negative 2b C. Okay. So if you put it in your calculator just that way, inverse cosine of 25.6 squared minus 12.6 squared minus 21.6 squared divided by, did I put two parentheses at the start? That would be a problem because it's going to give me an error if I don't. Second, insert a parenthesis. So negative 2 times 12.6 times 21.6. We go enter. We get a nice answer 91.93.1 and then all I have to do is switch just take the same one to find B since B is 12.6 I'd switch A and B around so I put 25.6 where there was a B and a 12.6 where there was an A And I get 29.4. And if we add these up, that's 122.5. So if we take 180 minus 122.5, we get 57.5 for this one. Are we good? Okay, side angle side, 6, 8, 97.2. So we use one of the top ones. So 6 squared plus 8 squared minus 2 times 6 times 8, cosine of We get a big number, so we have to take the square root of that to find what we're actually looking for, which is 10.5845, because they want four decimal places. Then we use the law of sines, the sine of 97.2 over 10.5845 equals the sine of alpha over 6. And then use law of sines to finish it. So 6 times the sine of 97.2 divided by this answer that we had here. Second sine, second answer, 34.2.
and 34.2, 97.2 is 131.4. So this is 48.6. Area of a triangle, if we have three sides, what formula do we use? Heron's formula. S equals 4.3 plus 8.1 plus 12, all divided by 2, which is 12.4 plus 12 is 24.4 divided by 2, which is 12.2. So S equals the square root of 12.2 times 12.2 minus 4.3, which is 7.9, times 12.2 minus 8.1, which is 4.1, times 0 0.2. If we take the square root of all those, We get 8.88, so 8.9. There you have this triangle. If alpha is 46.9, beta is 60.5, and C, the side C, so if gamma is here, C is 10.5. We have angle, side, angle. We need side, angle, side, so we have to do... How do I find the side B? Any way to find side B? Law of signs. Okay. So this is 106 point, or actually it's 107.4 is what those add up to. 180 minus 107.4 is 6 to 72.6, which is this one. So the sine of 72.6 over 10.5 equals the sine a 60.5 over its opposite side B. So 10.5 times the sine of 60.5 divided by the sine of 72.6 is 9.6. So now that we have side angle side, we go one half, 9.6, 10.5, sine of 46.9. So that answer times 10.5 times one half times the sine of 46.9 is 36.7. And then we get on to the new stuff that we just covered. A was 0, 0,5. B is 2, 0. What do they add up to? 2, 5. 2, 5. They subtract to negative 2, 5. Okay. A is at 2, 4. B is at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, 2. So they add up to 7, 6. And they subtract to be negative 3, 2. Okay? And which you can't even see where those are at. All right. 30 degrees, magnitude of 4. Which one is it, A or B? B. There's a 30 degree, 2 degree angle. Okay. Uh, magnitude of the vector, you take the square root of negative 1 squared plus negative 2 squared, which is 1 plus 4, or the square root of 5. And then you take the inverse tangent of 2 over 1. Somebody do that. Inverse tangent of 2 over 1. point. 63.4 degrees, but we're in quadrant three, so it's 63.4 degrees down from 180, so it's 243.4 is our angle. And the donkey problem, last one.
So there's a parallelogram there, 75, 75 and 50, so that makes this 75. If this is a 30 degree angle here, this is a 150 degree angle. There's my side angle side. So 50 squared plus 75 squared minus 2 times 50 times 75 cosine of 150. Doing that, 50 squared plus 75 squared minus 2 times 50 times 75 <coughs> cosine of 150. And then take the square root of the answer. Gives me 120.9. Which makes sense because these add up to 125. So it should be slightly less because they're working at an angle. Okay. So I will put out the sample test. Shandy, get your physics done.